Miss Purple is about an estranged sibling's reconnecting during the final days of their father's life and to make ends meet and pay for her father's uh, hospice care. The main character is a karaoke hostess. The thing that inspired the story is uh, a lot from my own life. My sister uh, has not always gotten along with me and I have not gotten along with her sometimes, but, and we've had some pretty crazy parents at times. So us dealing with them has been like a joint effort, but also like our personal relationships uh, between each other have been really complicated. Also, I wanted to um, tell a story about kids who grew up locally in Koreatown, Los Angeles, because um, that area is becoming so gentrified that um, it's kind of losing sometimes. I feel it's, it's kind of a soul in a way. From the beginning, Justin wants to have a visual language that's specific for the film. Like, uh, he doesn't want us to, you know, imitate our references or anything. So um, so we did a lot of tests with our production designer, Bo, and costume designer, Eunice. Try to find something, like, you know, the color pa palette, the texture, and, uh, you know, since it's in color, and it's titled Miss Purple, we actually had a lot of green tint, which is the complete opposite of purple or magenta into the film. So almost like a, an older Fuji stock where you can feel the tint everywhere. It is in production design or in the in the custom that, that we built. So a few scenes where we lit with like magenta lights. When she's wearing, you know, the purple, it would really leave a strong impression. We tested pretty much all the cameras on the market and we end up liking the image quality and the size and the weight of the Alexa Mini. And because we knew, you know, half a film will be handheld and then cars in tight spaces. And the image of Alexa really loves to live a lot of stuff in the shadows. And we also tested the, the camera, all the eyes, so we and we put it through a colorist and we ended up shooting the entire thing, entire movie on um, 1280. It's a really reliable camera because we put it through like all the different situations. And then I, on the most stripped down days, all we had was like a first AC. Yeah. And then we'll just go on this real locations and shoot. Shooting required us to be really resourceful with what was available to us, which was integrated into the look and how we chose to tell the story. There's a shot in the film where we're rolling at hospital bed through the busiest intersection of Koreatown. They pushed the bed across the street and um, the bed fell apart. And, you know, luckily the actors were committed and he didn't get out of the, you know, the dad didn't get out of the bed and stayed, stayed uh, unconscious. and. The other actor put the bed back together and, and carried on, but um, we didn't have uh, we didn't have permission to shoot that. Had we have had paid for it, we would have to block off that whole street, hire cops, uh, stage cars, uh, stage extras, pay all those people, and the setup times and all that stuff would take a few hours. We shot in five minutes. Indie filmmaking at its finest. <laughs> I have specific things I tell uh, young filmmakers. One being, why? why? Why do you even want to do it? Why? What's the purpose of it? And I think once you understand the purpose of why you're making a, a certain film, everything becomes a lot easier in terms of commitment and the hard times because you know what that end goal is and, and you know how it's gonna either benefit yourself or other people, you know. If you're not technically there yet, you can learn all that stuff. If you're not the best at writing yet, you'll get better. The hardest part, I think, is understanding why you're doing what you're doing. 